All right, today's lesson we are going to look at logarithmic expressions. Our goal today is to evaluate logarithmic expressions, convert between different forms, um, and we're also going to look at the uh, logarithmic scales. So it's a new topic. So let's just recap. So in your previous course, you should have been introduced to logarithms. Uh, it's a prerequisite before starting this course. Let's just have a quick, I figured some of you will be a little bit off on that one. So I'll give you a quick introduction. So I'm going to ask for some help with this one. I, I'm feeling a bit stupid today. Um, can somebody help me? What is 10 squared? Let me see some hands. Let me see some hands. Oh my. 100. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So what is the number that we need to raise 100 by in order to get, sorry, what is the number we need to raise 10 by in order to get 100? What is the number we need to raise 10 by in order to get 100? Carlos? Two. All right, I'll make it a bit harder this time. Who could tell me what 10 to the 3 is? Oh, smart today. We've had our breakfast. What is the number we need to raise 10 by in order to get 1,000? Three. Oof. Excellent. Excellent. All right. I'll put, the, I'll put the challenging question in. Most people don't get this one. What is, however, 10 to the 4? Where's your hand? All right. Now, somebody chop it off. Uh, Sam, 10,000. Okay. What is the number we need to raise 10, 000, sorry, 10 by in order to get 10,000? Four. Four. Okay, let's go down backwards a little bit the other way. 10 to the 1. What is that going to be equal to? Zinedine. 10. 10. What is the number we need to raise 10 by in order to get... 10. Carlos? One. Can we go a bit lower? Oh, it's not going to let me move that. So, what is the number we need to raise 10 by? Sorry, no. If we raise, what is 10 to the zero? One. What number do we need to raise 10 by? in order to get one. Glee. Zero. Zero. Let me squeeze one in here at the top. What is 10, oh, do this one here. What is 10 to the minus one? Can you give us a decimal? It'll look, it'll look prettier. Excellent. Okay, what is the number, oh, you might well need to see that. What is the number we need to raise 10 by in order to get 0.1? Sam? Negative. Negative 1. This is what a logarithm is. A logarithm answers the question. <laughs> what question does the log, does logarithm answer? What phrase have I been using repeatedly? No, I, I, one, two, three. I've said it six times, at least. If not, I said it twice each time. What was the question on the right I asked? What is the number we need to raise 10 by in order to get x. So that is the logarithm of x. So the logarithm is a function that answers the question, what is the number we need to raise 10 by in order to get x? 
It's a function that answers the question for you. So what is the number we need to raise 10 by? What is the number we need to raise 10 by in order to get 50? Can we estimate it? Yeah. What would we estimate it to be? 1.5? How are you doing that? Oh, 1.5 is okay. We'll understand logarithmic scale why it's not going to be 1.5. But why are we saying 1. Point something? Yeah. So we're basically looking at it needs to sort of fit in the pattern, sort of here-ish, doesn't it? It needs to sort of fit in the pattern here-ish. And we can use it to estimate it. This is what a logarithm is. Now, we don't have to have 10 as the base. So, in exponential form, 10 to the a is equal to c implies that the logarithm in base 10 of c is equal to a. So the logarithm of c in base 10 is the number we need to raise 10 by to get c. We can extend that to other bases. So if we see here in this one, I'm focusing here that the base is 10. This is what we call um, common logarithms. So write that a bit bigger. This this is common logarithms. Base 10. We have common logarithms, natural logarithms, and then just uh, logarithms. So here in this second one, we see a more general definition for the logarithm, where the base has been changed to base b. So the base we show there with a subscript after the logarithm. Is it natural logarithm base? Natural logarithms, oh, yes. I don't have natural logarithms here on my sheet. But when we have the base b in a general form, the logarithm of c in base b is the number we need to raise b by in order to get c. And when we have the two forms, exponential form and logarithm form, our first task for today is to practice moving between the two forms. So here we see exponential form and logarithm form. Um, so we are looking to see if we can convert from exponential form to logarithm form. Let me do an example for you. So here we see it in logarithm form. What's the base? The base is 3. We can see here that's the base. So if the base is for 3, start with that. So it's logarithm base 3. Now, it's the number we need to raise 3 by in order to get um, 9. So the logarithm of 9 would be 2. The logarithm of 9 would be 2. 2 is the number we need to raise 3 by in order to get 9. So the logarithm answers the question, what is the number we need to raise 3 by in order to get 9. So the logarithm of 9 must be 2. Have a go at converting these three into logarithm form. Okay, let's have a look at our answers here. So what will we have for the first one? What will we have for the first one? Logarithm of 10 of what? Of y equals x. And for b, for c? Do we have somebody else? Jude? Logarithm of r of w equals c. And then the last one? Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, of y. Of y? Excellent. So what we see here is he's introducing um, the logarithm in base E has this short form ln. 
So the logarithm in base e, which is a natural number, has the short form ln. <coughs> okay, so in this question, we want to convert from logarithm form to exponential form. So make sure we're familiar with the terminology, log form and exponential form. And then the first question is an example. What's the base? Seven. So, zoomed in too much. So we want seven squared is equal to x. X is the number we need to raise seven by in order, sorry, two is the number we need to raise seven by in order to get x. Have a go at these three. Let's have a look then. So if we want to convert this one into exponential form, what's the base? Three. So it's three to the power of x, x is equal to y. y. Who can do c for me? Is it in? 10 squared equals y. 10 squared equals y. And d? Jude? E to the power of 4 equals C. Excellent. So we can use this technique to evaluate logarithms as well. So here on this first one, we need to find this one. So what I tend to do is I like to set, a, set this equal to X, and then rearrange it into exponential form, which will be 2 to the X is equal to 8. And then I can ask myself, what do I need to raise 10 to by in order to get 8? So that is equal to 3. Have a go at these questions here. We've got quite a few questions on this one. Five minutes, please. Right, so the first one. What do we raise 5 by to get 25? So this is equal to 2. In other words, 5 to the what is equal to 25? 5 to the 2. What do we raise 2 by to get 32? What do we raise 2 by to get 32? 2 to the 5 is equal to 32. What, what do we raise 10 by in order to get 100? Zinedine. Two. Ooh, I got lost. What do we raise 16 by in order to get four? Carlos. A half. Let me do this the long way. So if we set this equal to x, we're asking, what do we raise 16 by in order to get four? We square root it. What do we raise, so let me put an x in here. What do we raise 3 by in order to get 1? No. Zero. This is an important thing to remember. It's a really useful property. Is the logarithm in any base of 1 equals 0. That's a useful fact to remember. It's a good point when sketching uh, logarithm functions is it goes through the coordinate 0 comma 1 or the logarithm in any base is equal to 1. What is the logarithm of 10? Carlos. 1. Also a useful fact to remember is the logarithm in any base of the base is equal to 1. The logarithm in any base of the base is equal to 1. So those are two useful facts four properties if you want. Right then, so if this is equal to x, then the base is going to be 6. 6 to the x is equal to 1 <laughs> over 36. What does x have to be? Negative 2. Negative 2. Negative two. I didn't know you were teaching IM3, Mr. Smith. 
I apparently seem to be teaching IM3 here in this course. <laughs> okay, use your calculator to evaluate these ones. I'll give you two minutes for that test. Okay, let's have a go at evaluating these with the calculator. So on the calculator, uh, you can find the logarithm buttons here on the left next to one, and we've got logarithm in base 10 and logarithm in base E. So if we take this logarithm, it allows us to enter the base. So if we put in 10, we'll, I know, we'll get logarithm 10 e of nine. We can see that this one is going to be 0.95. Let's try and find the common logarithm Zinedine of 6,125. We get 3.79. And then the logarithm base 2 of 10 is going to be equal to 3.32. And then lastly, the logarithm in base 7 of 135. We should have got 2.52. Did anyone not get these? If you need help with your calculator, call me over and I'll come and show you how to do it. Okay, so next up we are going to look at logarithmic scales. Oh, let me just go back at, let me just go back on a problem. So we talked earlier on one of the slides. We talked earlier on one of the slides, and we tried to make an estimate. We tried to make an estimate here of what is the logarithm in base 10 of 50. And we guessed 1.5. Use your calculator to find out what it actually is. Use your calculator now to find out what it actually is. What, what did you get? 1.69897. Yeah. So it's actually 1.7. This, this is because of a logarithmic scale. It increases very quickly at the beginning, and then it slows down with the higher numbers. So it increases very quickly in the first half of the transition, and then very slowly in the latter half. I'll just show you how that looks as a scale. We're going to be looking at scales. This is a logarithmic scale. So it increases very quickly at the beginning and then slower to at the end. Okay, we'll come back to that. All right, so what can we use log scales for? Well, if we look at this graph here, I'll show you quite easily. If we look at this graph here, this is a graph of the population of the U.S. over a 200-year period. So what was the population after 20 years? What was the population after 60 years? Do you see the issue with this graph? We can't read off the values from the first 100 years, more or less. We can only read them off from the second 100 years. It'd be useful if we could create a graph like this where you could read them all off or, or get an estimate of them. So if we plot that, if we notice here, um, we are going up with a linear scale where we're adding a million every time on the left-hand side. Notice we're adding a million. Instead, if we have a log scale, we could go up by 10 to the 1, 10 to the 2, 10 to the 3, 10 to the 4, 10 to the 5. So the question was, what was the value when after 20 years? Now can you... Uh, Give me an answer. So this is a thousand, and this is ten thousand, and we want around about there. Uh, 
Well, I think that's a decent estimate. So we can see that at 20, after 20 years, you can read this value off as being around about 8,000 on this scale. Can you see that? Yes. So we can read the values off in this region much more clearly thanks to the use of the uh, logarithmic scale. What else do we notice? One thing you'll notice is when you plot an exponential function, here we've clearly got something that looks like an exponential curve. Oh, my, my estimate was a bit clearer than the iPad. When we plot an exponential function on a logarithmic scale, it becomes linear. This is interesting. Okay, so let's have a go at plotting values on a logarithmic scale. So we need to plot these next three values. So we've got 1840. That's, um, so this is the population. Sorry, we missed a little bit there. This is the population from 1620 onwards, is it? So for 1840, we need to plot it here at this point. And we need 17 million. So this is 1 million. This is 1 million. This is 10 million. So if that's 10 million, we need something that is just a little bit above that. So we need to plot around about there at this point. Then we need 30 million. Our scale doesn't quite go up that high. Um, so our next check mark, we need that distance, so about the same distance, so it's about there. This would be 100. Let's draw that across. Draw this one up. Let's draw this one up. So 50 is going to be, it was 1.7, wasn't it, for 50? So it's going to be about there. 30 is going to be about here. So we're plotting there on a log scale. Let's have a go at plotting these points on a bit of log paper. This is log lin paper. So here we have a linear scale. Here we have a logarithmic scale. Where is 1, 20 going to go? It's going to go here, isn't it? Where is 2, 300? So if this is 100, 200. This is... 300. Have a go at plotting the other three. Oops. Sorry about that. But for the sake of the video, let me just go back and show you. I'm messed up there a little bit. There we go. Have a go at plotting the other three. Okay, so we need to plot the point 3 comma 2. So there's 3, this is 1, so this is 2. 4 comma 15, there's 4, this is, this is 10, 11, 12, 13, sorry, 10, 11, 12, let me do a bigger tips, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And then 5, 350. So 5, this is 100, 200, 300. That's 400. So 350 is in between. We want this point here. Sorry, Jude. How is 15? Oh, oh, thank you. I <laughs> got it completely wrong there on that one, didn't I? So three, four, 
4 comma 15. So if this is 10, this is 20. So where's 15? It's halfway between those two, isn't it? So 4 comma 15 is going to be here. Sir. Thanks, dude. Mahana. So they count up. So if we look at the scale here, this one is one. So we get two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But then we hit ten. So now we go up ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy. 80, 90, and then we go up in hundreds. So 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1,000. So the scale goes up in increasing amounts. So it's more like yeah. All right. Let's have a go at a problem solving question. I'd like you to work in pairs for this one, and then I'll show you the solution. Five minutes. All right then. So. <coughs> this is a little bit trickier. Why is it my screen not sharing correctly? There we go. Okay, so what we want to do is the pH value of a liquid is calculated by the formula pH equals minus log base 10 of C, where C is the concentration of hydrogen ions in moles per litre. Decimeters cubed is a litre, so moles per litre or moles per decimeter cubed. Calculate the concentration of hydrogen ions in a cup of black coffee whose pH value was 49. So what we want to do is this one for part A, is we're going to set up the equation using the model. 4.9 is equal to minus log base 10 of C. And we have to calculate what C is. There's two ways we can do it. So one of the easiest ways is to solve this right now using n-solve. So on the calculator, we can press menu, algebra, n solve and then we type in the equation 4.9 equals equals buttons over here on the left equals and then use this negative button don't use subtraction use negative down below three and then we want control logarithm base 10 of c and then we're going to say comma C to tell the calculator to solve for the variable C. This will give us this number here, 1.26 E minus 10, E minus 5. Now, that number is in standard form. That is a number how the calculator expresses standard form. So in this case, we are getting C is equal to 1.26 times 10 to the power of minus 5. So we can write it like this. If you're wishing to solve the equation, we would rearrange it. And you can rearrange this one into the form. C is equal to 10 to the minus 4.9. If you're wishing, if you don't have n solve on your calculator, just rearrange into this form and that will allow you to get the same answer. Okay, B is a little bit easier. In case of B, we're just putting the number in to find the pH value. So the pH is equal to minus log of, in base 10, of 1.26 times 10 to the minus 6. Put a little bracket around there. Now let me show you how to do that on the calculator. So on the calculator, we want to press Control Logarithm. We put in the base 10. And then we want to type in that number, 1.26 times 10 to the minus 6. So we do 1.26, and then press this double E button on the left here next to the A. Look on the keyboard down near A. You'll find a double E. That brings up the 
um, standard form and then use the negative symbol below 3, negative 6. I have to times this by minus 1. I forgot to put the negative in front of the logarithm. Or I could just do it in my head. Um, that one's going to give me 5.9. It says a pH level of 5.9. So in C, how much has the pH gone up by? How much has the pH gone up by? When we've added the milk to the coffee, the pH has in increased. It's become less acidic, hasn't it? It's gone up by one. Now, the pH scale is a logarithmic scale. This is a logarithmic scale. How many times more or less is the hydrogen ion concentration of milky coffee? So, zero? No, it's plus one. Yeah, plus one ten to the zero is one. Oh yeah, that's true. Zero. Like, isn't ten to the zero one? Yeah, one. Not ten. It's not ten to the zero is one. It's not one times more. Oh, one million. We've gone up from one millionth to one hundred thousandth, or we've gone up from no, we've gone down from one hundred thousandth to one millionth. Have we multiplied by 10, divided by 10? Discuss with the person next to you. Divided by 10, yes. Have we multiplied or divided? Is it bigger or is it smaller? These are all good questions. So, this is the value for black coffee. This is the value for milky oh. coffee. This is ten. Which one of those two is bigger? Black, black coffee, coffee or milky coffee? Black coffee? black coffee is much bigger. Black coffee is 10 times bigger. Milky coffee is therefore 10 times smaller. So what we see here with these numbers is it is 10 times less. So less what? Hydrogen ion concentration. Oh. Concentration of hydrogen ions or hydrogen ions. So it's 10 times less. We've multiplied by 1 over 10 or we've divided by 10. Notice that when you increase by 1, we're dividing by 10. If we were to increase by another one, it would be by 100. Because this is a logarithmic scale. This scale works in the same way as the scale that we saw here. This scale works in the same way as the scale that we see here. So going up 1 on the pH scale will be times by 10, but on the next bit it's going to be times by 100, and then times by 1,000. So let's have a go at the last question now. Give you a couple of minutes for this question. We have three minutes for this question. Okay, are we ready? So this one, it's a little bit tricky. Let me go back a, a, a minute. So this question here, how many times, so when we went from 4.9 to 5.9 on a logarithmic scale, we gone up by 1. How many times smaller was it? It was 10 times smaller. It was 10 to the 1 times smaller, because this is a negative logarithmic scale. It was 10 to the 1 times smaller. If we were to go from 4.9 up to 6.9, how many times smaller would it be? That would be 10 to the 2 times smaller. If we went from 
4.9 up to 7.0. How many times smaller would it be? It would be 10 to the power of 2.1 times smaller. So, here in our earthquake question, we've got a positive uh, logarithmic scale. Um, so, it's the more intense the earthquake, the larger the number. It's a positive logarithmic scale. So, we are going from 7.9 to 8.2. That's an increase of how much? 0.3. So we want to calculate what value? 10 to the 0.3. What is 10 to the 0.3? Sir, it's just times 10 No. Sir, from 4.0 to 5.0. From 7.9 to 8.9. This is going to be 2. Okay, have a go with the homework questions.